This is an introduction to exercise 5G on the volume of a prism, page 338. Like I said, this exercise is a little bit easier because it requires a lot less steps than before. But uh, we're going to start with the do now question from the last exercise. Remember that if it's a half cylinder, quarter cylinder, it gets really tricky. You can't really just use the one formula for it. Uh, so here, what we're going to do is break it up in different bits. We know that the total surface area or the surface area of a solid is just the outside. And I've identified there are three different shapes. There's this front quarter circle, and I know it's a quarter because it's got a 90 out of 360. So I've got this front quarter circle, and then I've got the same shape on the back. So I need to find out what's. I've got this bottom rectangle, which is also the same as the side rectangle, because it's, they're both 5 by 8. And I've also got this curved one, which arguably could be said to be the more difficult one there. So we'll start with this quarter circle. We know the area of a circle is pi r squared. So pi times r squared times, times pi times 5 squared. But it's only a quarter, so I've just got a quarter times, or quarter of, pi times 5 squared. If you put that in the calculator, we'll end up with an answer of... And I'm going to approximate it to two decimal places, 19.63. Alright, let's keep going. So for the area of the bottom and the side, each one being the same, they're both 5 by 8, so that becomes 40. So I'm going to write approximately, or rather there's no need for approximately, it is exactly 40. And the bottom one here, we're going, we know the area of this rectangle, imagine if we unfolded it or unraveled it, it would be a length of 8, and we have to find this width here. So, 8 times, again, this is a quarter of the circumference around the circle. So, a quarter of, or quarter times, the formula being 2 pi r, so 2 times pi times r is 5, so we get times 5, 5. We put that in the calculator, so we go 8 divided by 4, times 2, times 5, I'm just doing it out of order, times pi, gives us an answer of approximately 62.83. And a lot of students from there would just add those numbers up. We can't just add them up because we have to figure out how many of each one we have. I have two of these, I have two of these and one of these. So I'm going to add them up accordingly. I'm going to go two times... 2 times 19.63 plus 2 times 40 plus that last 62.83, which gives, an answer, gives us an answer of 182.09. Yes? Screen's frozen. Screen's frozen. Thank you for letting me know. Gives us an answer of 182.09. Let me try reconnecting it. Is that coming up now? Lovely. All right, so a total of 182.09. Don't forget it is centimeters and it's an area we're looking for, so centimeters squared. <clears throat> now, generally speaking, just to give you a heads up, um, what I've done here is technically <coughs> bad practice. And you're not going to lose marks over in year nine, and probably not in year 10 either, but you need to be very careful of this. What I've done is I've actually rounded early for each section, I've rounded two decimal places, and then at the very end, I've added them together, etc. What you should ideally do, right, is to keep it in exact form. And what I mean by that is just leave it as, in this case, 25 over 4 pi, which is what you're getting with the calculator and then do those calculations and rounding at the very end. But I'm nitpicking now. Just give you a heads up for those of you that are looking to do more advanced maths. All right, let's go on to today's content. There are a couple of things that we need to know. Now, this one over here, on the left-hand side, you can see that you've got a conversion. You've got a conversion. So you should have the conversion between kilometers, meters cubed, etc. Let's quickly reconnect. I want you to copy it right now. I'll get you to copy it very soon. After this, there we go. So there's a different conversion, just like when we had, for example, centimeters to millimeters being times ten. 
And then from centimeters squared, this is a millimeter squared, it was times 10 squared. Of course, if we increase the power, it just keeps going. All right, so for the third dimension, centimeters cubed to millimeters cubed, we use this conversion. A lot of students will incorrectly use just times 10. So please make sure you refer to this when you're doing these kinds of questions. What I'm going you to write down right now is this section right here. <coughs> Some of them are very obvious, but I'll explain it to you right now. Obviously, we know that 1,000 milliliters is one liter. Okay, so 1,000 milliliters is one liter. But I'll get you to copy down that first document right there. Megaliters, or capital ML, which makes a big difference, is 1,000 kiloliters. and then one kiloliter is 1,000 liters. You can imagine that a kilogram is 1,000 grams, so one kiloliter is 1,000 liters. Makes sense? We call this capacity. Now, when you try to figure out, for example, how much liquid a certain shape would hold, or how much gas a certain shape would hold, that would be a capacity. So we have milliliters, liters, etc. Et so those are three main ones there. One centimeter cubed is also one milliliter. If you ever watch those uh, those doctor shows on TV and they always talk about adding one uh, one add twenty cc's of this whatever chemical, right? Cc just stands for cubic centimeters, which is what cm cubed is, uh, which just means milliliters. So when they say twenty cc's, they mean twenty milliliters. That's all that means. All right. Any questions? Lovely. It's just a conversion from there. Let's look at today's application question. You do not need to write this down, but I'll get you to write just this section down. Just that one there. The volume equals to the area times by the perpendicular height. Sounds very complex. I'll explain what that means right now. <laughs> a reminder that volume is the space and three-dimensional shape and hold. It is now a third dimensional measurement. So we use centimeters, meters cubed, meters, uh, centimeters cubed, etc. For the volume of something like this, it's a weird shape. We are used to doing volume of things like of rectangular prisms, things that are nice and easy. But if it's a very weird shape, we don't have to do a whole bunch of measurements. All we need to do is find the area of the base or the top, if they're assuming they're the same, and then just times by the height. That's it. Imagine they're like individual layers and you just find the total area of all of this as a volume. So the volume is the area of the cross section. So if you cut in half, what's the area of the middle? And then times it by the height. Let's put that in practice super quickly. The example on the left hand side is so easy. It's just, well, the volume is the area of the bottom or the top times by the height. Well, the area of the bottom times by the height means the volume. Volume is going to equal to 4 times 2. 8 centimeters cubed. Done. That's it. Super easy. Anytime you're given an area on the top, and you can multiply it by the height to get the volume. The one on the right-hand side requires a little bit more thinking. We're still doing the same thing. If I was to tip this on its side, the bottom and the top would be the same, right? So the, this one would be my height, and this would be my base. So I'm going to find the area of my base here. I'm going to write base over here. And this one is going to be my height. Can I get you to copy this example down, the one on the right-hand side for me? You all right, gentlemen? Area of the space, 
Remember, this triangle is just half times the base times height. Half times 3 times 2. Bring your calculator, we're just doing it here. Three minutes square. That's it. Then we just multiply by the height. That's what the formula said. Let's multiply the area by the height. So we go volume equals the three times by the five, which gives fifteen meters. And don't forget, now it's cubed, not square. And that's it. Any questions? Okay. I'm gonna